Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman, and this is the Triple Morphine Filter Model 291E by Buchle & Associates, which I impulse purchased off of Reverb along with a complex waveform generator model 261E, but that's the topic for another time. Right now, I want to talk about the 291. And as I mentioned, this was an impulse purchase. I don't actually even have a power supply and case to put this in yet. So while I'm sorting that out, I figure we'll take it apart and try to see how it works. You can tell a lot by just looking at the back here. It is a triple morphine filter, and you'll see there's three sections on this bottom PCB that appear to be very similar, which suggests that we have filters one, two, and three. Notice that it's a fairly complicated construction. It's got three different PCBs. So if you're wondering why the 191 is more expensive than some of the other Buchla modules, then that's why. Notice that the front panel, I guess these aren't really eighth inch jacks. I think they're called tinny jacks or something like that. They're a little bit bigger than standard 3.5 millimeter jacks. And let's see, the banana jacks also, these are all front panel type mounted pots. So these have to be hand soldered to run to the rest of the board. And that's complicated to do. Uh, the banana jacks, notice they actually have to have a hole in the PCB for the banana jacks to go through. Okay, before I start taking this apart, let's keep track of how it's hooked together. So there's a ribbon cable here connecting these PCBs, the PCB1, I'll call that the PCB closest to the front panel to PCB2. Okay, so I've got to be very careful there. And let's see, I've got this little cable here with green inside and brown outside. Now, this is a keyed connector, so I shouldn't be able to screw that up, but I can screw things up pretty readily, so I want to be cautious. Let's see, there's the power connector that goes to board number two. And let's see, down here, there's another little ribbon connector here. Let's see, the black and white wires are going to the outside of the board here. Again, that's keyed, so this should be hard to screw up. And just the way the board's put together, this should be hard to get backwards. Uh, let's see, there's a ribbon cable in here. And looking at the bottom of the board, the Buchla, <laughs> sorry, the Buchla and Associates side, red is to the left. Again, that should be hard to mess up, but you never know. And let's see, there's another cable over here that's hooking board to way over to the other side of board one and that's keyed let's see looking at the side with the stage numbers here that's keyed with red to the left so i can go back and watch this video later if i get confused okay i've got one two three screws here for the standoffs oh and isn't this beautiful this thing actually just unfolds like a book I love how beautiful this is. Let's see, I do want to see what's under this ribbon cable, so I'm going to disconnect this here. Okay, so what do we have here? This is the Buchla & Associates Model 291E Board 2, Revision 2. Let's see, it's dated March 2005, it looks like. And let's see, this is a 74HCT595 8-bit shift register, so some sort of I.O. there with other parts of the board. The microcontroller here is a 8051F121. The 8051 is an Intel microcontroller architecture. It's actually a pretty old microcontroller architecture, and so it's not any sort of fancy ARM core, but this doesn't really need a fancy ARM core. Uh, a couple of dip switches, Let's see, this is a LF353, that's a standard dual op amp. And the most interesting thing here are these LTC1664. These are 10-bit quad digital to analog converters. So that suggests to me that these are generating the control voltages for the analog side over here. And so that tells me that each of these filters is probably controlled with four parameters. We also have a connector here that's not hooked to anything. Oh, you know what? I bet you that's for programming the microcontroller. I bet you that's a programming spot. Let's see. There's also this big bank of capacitors here with these resistor packs. 
I wonder what that's about. Maybe these are PWM filters for PWM outputs. I'm not sure. If you have a good guess as to what these are, please leave a comment below. And let's see, I would like to see under this board. So I'm going to disconnect here and see if I can fold this out without having to disconnect this ribbon cable uh, because I have a bad history with ribbon cables like that. Okay, and I do have two nuts here that I need to remove. Okay, I'm going to have to be really careful getting this back together because there's this header here. Let's see, that's a 6x2 header. Mill pins. That plugs in right here into this front panel board. All right, so this is the Buchlin Associates Model 291E Panel Board 1, Revision 2. Okay, let's see what we have on here. So this is handling all of our front panel interface stuff. Oh, and there's another microcontroller here. Check this out. So this is a 8051F310. So second microcontroller, probably handling front panel duties of various sorts. And let's see, I'm going to guess then this is probably the programming port for that microcontroller. That's just a guess. Have a whole bunch of resistor packs. Let's see, all of the LEDs are PCB mounted, but the banana jacks here, those are all front panel mounted. So those have to be wired up by hand, very time consuming. So that's one of the reasons a unit like this is going to be more expensive. It's not just that there's a boucle tax. It's a complicated construction. Okay, so here we have an LTC1665. This is an octal 8-bit digital to analog converter. I don't think this thing has any control voltage output, so I wonder what they're using that for. Are they using a full DAC chip to drive the LEDs? instead of PWM? Maybe. I don't know. If you have a guess, leave a comment below. And let's see, all the rest of the chips here are 74HTC595 shift registers. So it's using those shift registers to control an absurd amount of stuff on the front panel, given the limited number of pins on the microcontroller. But I really don't understand what that 8-bit DAC is doing there. Hmm. And actually, putting that back together was pretty easy. So it's complicated, but it's really well thought out. If somebody like Mark Verbos was given one of these and needed to try to fix it, it's a possible thing to do, I think. Okay, I would like to spend some quality time with the analog board, so I'm going to disconnect these folks here. And ah, uh, H10 here hooks to this ribbon cable that looks like it connects to these modulation inputs and signal inputs. And the outputs up here, let's see, those connect over here, and it's conveniently labeled. We have C out, B out, A out, all out, and expand in. Okay. And this is the Model 291 Morphine Filter Board 3 Revision 2, again, March 2005. Okay, and this answers a question I've always wondered about, which is, does this use Vectrals like the Buchla 291 and the original Buchla Electric Music Box, whatever it is, series? And the answer is no, it does not use Vectrals. It, in fact, uses two SSM2164 quad voltage-controlled amplifier chips, and in a Modern design, if SSM stopped making these, Buchla and Associates or Buchla USA, whatever it's called now, could use the new SSI2164 chips. So this design could last a long time. So let's see, that's a total of eight voltage-controlled amplifiers. So this is actually probably closer in design to the state variable filters in the Oberheim OBMX. And let's see, each filter uses one, two, three, four LF353 op amps. Those are duals, so that's a total of eight op amps. There's another 353 over here that is probably handling the duties of mixing the outputs of the three filters for some final output. That's just a guess. Each filter has a trim pot because it wouldn't be a buclo without trim pots. 
Okay, now this one is interesting. This is an LM6172, which is a very expensive dual op amp. It's like $7. So Don would not have used this here instead of a 353 unless he had a good reason he needed to do that. I wonder why he needed to do that. That's very interesting. And this LTC202, this is a quad CMOS switch that lets Don switch between different filter configurations. So very interesting. Okay, and that went together pretty easily in terms of putting it back together. So although it's complicated, it's really well thought out. And let's see, if they ever made a revision of this, or maybe they have made a revision of this. This board is from 2005. They may have a newer version. They could probably redo this board in surface mount and save a bit of cash in terms of manufacturing. But given all of the hand wiring for the front panel, there's not a whole lot of corners that they could really cut here. Anyway, hope you found that interesting.